I'd safe to say it would have been the same with my law. I'd also like to thank Richard, my new father-in-law, for all the kind words and the wishes of getting the, the uh, meal. In addition, I'd like to thank both Richard and Christine for all their kindness in the last six years of keeping a straight face when they heard that I was close to their daughter. I've always chosen to assume those with tears of joy. I'd also like to thank them for helping Amy to arrange this beautiful wedding and giving us the opportunity to get all together and celebrate our marriage. Uh, to my mum and dad, a special thank you for all uh, your love and support over the years. You've always been there when I've needed you. You got me through thick and thin and I feel extremely lucky to have you both as parents. I also want to thank you both uh, for everything you've done with our house. If you can't help us get everything together we'll probably move into a premier in our return to England. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and raise your glasses to Richard and Christine and David and Linda. Cheers. 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 That leads me on to the star of today, my gorgeous new wife, Amy. Yay! Hey. Uh, I can tell you absolutely stunningly gorgeous she looks today. When I saw you coming up this uh, chapel, I realised I looked down. I looked at myself and realised that this is definitely me getting the best deal out of this. Um, Amy, I love you in so many ways and for so many reasons. You know me and understand me like no one else ever could. You make me laugh so hard and smile so often. You have a way of bringing out the very best in me, but mostly because you're my very best friend. I love you with all my heart. Thank you for marrying me and making me the happiest man alive and for loving me as much as I love you. I know it's the start of many more happy years together. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding again for the most important toast I've ever liked to make. It's my beautiful wife, Amen. 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 <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank uh, Amy's bridesmaid, Gemma. You look stunning today. And thank you for keeping Amy calm and uh, getting to the chapel on time. Thanks to Chris, my best man. He's been a fantastic <laughs> brother, a loyal best friend. And he's always been there when I've needed it. Especially a few weeks ago on my stack do, but I'm sure uh, Chris will tell you about what happened tonight if you ask him nicely. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for making it to us and helping me and Amy celebrate our special day, as it wouldn't have been the same without you all. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Gemma, who's going to say a few words before Chris's speech. Cheers. Thank you. No pressure. <laughs> I've actually written a poem for the occasion, as you may or may not know. So here it is. My ode to Nick and Amy. In honour of their wedding, here's an ode to Amy and Nick. A story told in rhyming words of their relationship. Working together at Dirk Roots, they had long been mates. But in February 2005, they got it together and started to date. On a night out in Leeds is when it all began. Amy had decided that she wanted a man. She surveyed the options, eeny meeny, miny mo, and thought, Nick's the one, I'll have a go. <laughs> they decided to keep it quiet when they started dating, so Greg didn't realise he'd be crashing their first date if he went with my skating. <laughs> Nick made excuses and convinced Greg to give it a miss, but the ice ring was closed, so he just got Amy pissed. <laughs> Fly <laughs> Flying Amy with alcohol was evidently a good start, as they soon became a couple and were rarely seen apart. That year, Amy joined the Woodheads on their annual trips to St. Ives, where apart from Nick's growth bullet ahead, they had a time of their lives. <laughs> time went by, and before long, they were celebrating one year together. Nick took Amy to Prague and gave her a memory to treasure forever. <laughs> Nick looked uncomfortable over drinks and confessed he really had to go. Panic ensued as he searched for a toilet. Did he make it? Alas, no. <laughs> Disturbing incident, Amy was not deterred. He clearly loved the true meaning of the word. The feeling was mutual for Nick. He knew Amy was a talker. So later that year, they enjoyed a holiday together in Mallorca. <laughs> Life went on, they began to see each other more and more, and Nick began to wonder who he'd spent orange Wednesdays with before. <laughs> in 2008, to Cuba they went in search of Che Guevara, but settled for two weeks of sun, sea, and pina colada. In 2009, they celebrated their birthdays by going on a mini cruise. Nick dropped to one name and fell as well in Bruges. Amy had, Amy had to convince her she'd been under no duress as they broke the happy news that her answer was yes. To celebrate their engagement, a party was held at Der Carouds, where all who attended sunk an enormous amount of booze. So they began to plan their wedding and decided to get married in the sun. With, oh God. with grief chosen as the location, they invited everyone to come. So that brings us up to date. Woohoo, they're now betrothed. 
And we're all here to celebrate their wedding on the beautiful island of Rhodes. Congratulations to the happy couple. We think you're all class. To friends and family, it's always a class. <laughs> Way! Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well, we done. Here we go. Yes, well, I was quite upset when Gemma told me that she was uh, writing a poem because when we first started going out, she used to write a lot to me. And she's surprisingly funny, which I was quite upset when I realised that she was writing a poem. And my brother's a very good speechwriter as well, so this is sort of my first one, but I'll try my best. And I'm already teaching my first joke. Yes, so. I think so. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Chris and I'm Nick's lighter. Sorry, younger brother. It probably won't come as a surprise to any of you, but I've known him all my life. And in that time, well, he's been he's been like an older brother to me. Not always the more mature, but always <laughs> the older. And like all the older brothers, he's helped mould me into the fine, sweaty, man that you've seen today. <laughs> so in the morning, if you have any problems with my personal hygiene, or how much I've been drinking, you've probably got some blame to put on his shoulders. <laughs> now, being the sensible young man that I was, I didn't start drinking, if you believe it, until I was 18. And after hearing stories about Nick's nights out when he was at uni, I was understandably nervous, but pretty certain he'd made most of them up. Well now speaking after barely making it back through many of a night out with Nick, I can assure you he wasn't stretching the truth at all. Many of you will have had what I class as a privilege to enjoy a couple of beers, pitchers, yards, Jaegers and Buckfast with Nick and I hope you will all agree that he's nearly always the life of the party. Whether he's found dancing on Craig's garden wall all by himself <laughs> or trekking up the biggest hill in Cumbria with just his essentials, which are obviously his deer stalker, a far too big a bottle of Buckfast and his toothbrush, because all he wanted to do was brush his teeth. <laughs> who, who knows? Um, or many, all the many other stories that we all have of him. I think you can all safely say that he's a vital part of any good night. Now, moving on to Amy. I'm sure you'll all have noticed how stunning Amy looks today and what a beautiful dress she's chosen for the occasion. And I think it's not easy to be the centre of attention in such an amazing surroundings, but I think it only goes to compliment Amy on just how lovely she looks today. Yeah. But also, <laughs> I must admit, I've noticed the gorgeous bridesmaid to my left who's been giving me the eye all night. <laughs> and I don't want to sound big headed, but I think I'm going home with tonight. <laughs> and then there's Nick. I'm only joking, we all know how you love to rock a shirt and tie. But I must say that I'm not too impressed that you copied my outfit for the day, but I'll let you off since it's a special occasion. <laughs> right. For people who don't know, Nick and Amy, they grew close spending time together in a hot, bustling, humid environment. And I know what you're all thinking. I thought they were together before they went to Cuba. But no, I'm talking about the matchmaking machine that is the Dirk Roos Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true that there was no hotter place than Christmas lunch stood in, fr in the kitchen in front of Neil head chef with him going absolutely crazy about how slow we all were. <laughs> but I suppose that that's what happens when your manager gives you vodka psychics at 8 o'clock in the morning just to get you back to some level of functionality. <laughs> yes, Dirk Roos has a lot to answer for and I can only hope that you'll be as happy as Gemma and myself who stood together at that very kitchen. <laughs> this isn't a toast, I'm just thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> now I've known Amy for a long time now. Since starting out as waiters uh, together at Dirk Roos Hotel and going on to holidaying together every year now in the lovely Cornwall. She's starting to feel like a sister to me and I guess after today you truly are. But from knowing Amy so well I can see she's, the per she's perfect for Nick. She's patient, she's understanding, she's forgiving and most importantly she's very easily pleased. So I think we can all agree Nick is the ideal husband. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I'm absolutely delighted that Nick and Amy have decided to spend the rest of their lives together and to get married in such a wonderful place. I think I can speak for everyone here when I say you couldn't have chosen a nicer church, a nicer venue, a hotter venue, or a better looking best man. <laughs> but now, as is customary, I'm going to give you a few pearls of wisdom to leave the night on. Nick. Never get complacent. 
Look out for those telltale signs that there's something wrong with your relationship. You know the sort of thing that I mean. Not spending enough time together. When you are spending time together, not communicating enough. Or seeing the postman wearing your socks. <laughs> Any of those apply. And Amy. Well, let's just say, if you think the weight of a man's heart is through his stomach, you're aiming too high. <laughs> okay, enough with the funny stuff. Right, I would like to leave you all today. <laughs> I'd like to leave you all today with a final thought from a man who knows a thing or two about steering a relationship in the right direction, Mr. Jerry Springer. <laughs> Marriage in this day and age is far from easy. With all the pressures of day-to-day -day living, you will need to grow in mutual trust and understanding without ever forgetting what first brought you both together. In other words, may your love be modern enough to survive these times, yet old-fashioned enough to last forever. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to my brother and my new sister, the bride and groom. Thank you very much. The bride and groom. Nick and Amy. Cheers, darling. That's a lot, I'm Well done. Well done, Ashley. I think that is absolutely on its brain.